Today we finish off the 2026 MLB season in our Colorado Rockies draft only franchise. We're still the worst team in baseball, but the thing about September is you get a little glimpse into the future with some exciting MLB debuts. Today, the debuts I'm excited to see are third baseman Sterling Thompson making his debut at the age of 24, as well as Zach Veen, also 24 years old. If you think about it, and you think maybe for future years what we can prioritize looking in the draft, I mean, we still need a first baseman long term. But apart from that, you think Sterling Thompson and Zach Veen are probably the next guys that we could look to upgrade. But if they can prove that they are the long-term solution here in this month and heading into next season. And that opens up just a lot more optionality for us going forward in the draft. And I hope they do prove that they should be considered long-term solutions. So both of those players will make their debut against the Chicago White Sox today. And let's hop into the game. As we get this game started, let's take a look at the lineup. We're going to have Sterling Thompson hitting leadoff today with Zach Veen in the sixth spot for these two player debuts. We've got ourselves a home game against the Chicago White Sox, 65 and 74 this year. Certainly not one of the tougher teams in baseball, but they've been a decent bit better than us. Michael Kopech will be the man on the mound for the home team today. He's really started to turn his season around, hoping we can have a strong performance in this one. I really think he's somebody that I hope can stick around for the foreseeable future, and he gets this outing started off with a strike three looking. Kays the first batter up. Bringing up Colson Montgomery. Full count pitch is popped up to short. Murillo with an easy job settling underneath it. Two up, two down. We'll bring up Juan Soto, one of the biggest free agent movers, if not the biggest, in this franchise. And a good reaction from Ryan Bliss will get him out. So a strong first inning for Michael Kopech. Brings out the offense for the first time. We'll be batting against... Mike Soroka. 501 ERA this year has not been a strong season, so hopefully we can get the best of him. Thompson rounds it over to third, so his first plate appearance will not result in a hit. Solace up next, batting 245. Cuts this one through the infield. One out single on the full count pitch for Solace. Rafael Murillo, this team's star player this year, goes down swinging to start his day. So, Michael Chavis up with two outs. Salas trying to steal a bag, get into scoring position, but he is thrown out by Jansen. That didn't look particularly thrown hard, at least from my angle. So, Salas just must not have got that good of a jump. It was pretty close. Play to be fair. Robert lifts this one deep to left, and it is gone. A strong first inning by Kopech, but that would not last into the second. Robert rockets it out for 476 feet, putting Chicago on the board first. Robert, a very good player. One of the few bright spots on the Chicago White Sox roster, at least, you know, until they added Juan Soto. Eloy Jimenez after him gets it high up in the air. That one took quite some time to come down into the waiting love of Murillo. Over the middle of the plate, Andrew Vaughn will get himself on base. Bit of a missed, missed pitch there by Kopech will get the one-out double. Chicago looking to add on to that lead, the 19th Double for Vaughn this year. Jansen up next will draw a walk. So the second inning not looking nearly as clean as that first did. Rafael Murillo to the ground. We'll get the double play. A 6-4-3 out of the inning. 
Nice play by the shortstop, but won't get a replay of it because Robert also did something quite exciting there in the inning. Soroka for Chavis. Ground out to third. Back up to the play. He's hitting 226 so far this year. A shallow fly ball is tracked down over in right field. No two gone here. The first appearance for Zach Veen will be another ground out. We're getting a lot of these balls on the ground softly hit. So Soroka doing a nice job forcing soft contact early. Gonzalez lines out right into the glove of Jordan Beck. Solidly hit, though, for the nine hitter. Top of the order back up for the White Sox. Fletcher down in the left corner. Beck giving chase, but it should be extra bases here for the White Sox. 26 double of the year for Fletcher. Montgomery up behind him, and it's another long ball for Chicago. This one, a two-run blast by Colson Montgomery. Chicago's number one prospect at the start of this franchise. He is looking to make a name for himself here in the major leagues and does a nice job bringing home two Early runs for Chicago. Top of the third. Soto back up to the plate. 2-1 pitch is hit right to Michael Chavis. Good reaction time there for the second out. Both of Juan Soto's outs have been very similar. Pretty well hit just right at one of our infielders. Robert back up. He homered last time and he does it again. This one to center field, Robert, with two solo shots early in this game. And Chicago has opened up a 4-0 lead. Was hoping for a good showing from Kopech as he's continued to have his numbers improve throughout the season. It has not been the case, though, here today. Just getting rocked by Robert. He is a very talented player. But still, you don't like two stray homers. 103 and a half off the bats. 452 feet on this blast. Jimenez goes down swinging on that fastball. So a good end to the inning at least. But I'm sure Kopech is glad that it is over. Two homers allowed. Locklear up. He will draw the walk. First walk allowed by Soroka. And only the second man we've had on base so far. Can we bring him home? Cerny. 3-6-3 three, three, double play. He's going to clear the base pass once more. An offensive struggle to start this game. Soroka continues to reliably force these Soft contact grounders and helping him have so far a clean inning and that will continue through the end of the third. And Kopech have a good bounce back inning here in the fourth. He gets a good start to it with a pitch right on the edge of the zone. We've seen some good strikeout pitches from Kopech in this game. It's just the lows are very low. Marillo, what a play from shortstop. Off the ground. Had the arm strength to beat the runner there. I've got to see that one again. Murillo, been an offensive star for us, but he's capable of making plays on the defensive side as well. 85 miles an hour on that throw. The best young highlight we've seen in Murillo's young career. Johan Mankat will get this over to first, so... A clean inning for Kopech here, one he really needed. But it's time for our offense to get going. Second time through the order. Sterling Thompson in the right field through the gap. And he will get an extra base hit. His first career hit at the major leagues. 
You got to stow that ball away for the young man. Got to lead off double. Got to do something with it here with Solace up to the plate, but he's going to get underneath this pitch. So uh, infield fly. Gets us the first out. And Murillo drive home Colorado's first run. It's not going to get through the infield here. So he grounds out to third. A big theme so far for us is we're getting over all these balls. And Chavis swings at the slider outside. And we waste a leadoff double. Colorado remains at zero runs scored here as Gonzalez gets sniped of a hit. Another ball that he's hit well into the outfield. Both of his plate appearances have been balls hit very well into the outfield. Just not able to touch down. Four strikeouts here for Kopech. He's showing some good flashes with the strikeouts. Just not able to do much else here right as Montgomery is once again going to hit an extra base hit. Not quite the home run he hit last time out. But almost had another one there as it goes up off against the wall. And that will end the day for Kopech. Thought we should have allowed him at least to finish this fifth. But Soto goes to 0-3 on that grounder to Ryan Bliss. Bottom of the fifth now. Can Jordan Beck get something going? It is a diving attempt made by Moncada, but he will not throw over. So a leadoff single for Beck. Moncada would be shaken up. Nothing too serious, but that would keep him out for the rest of this game. As Veen gets grounded into a double play here the second time. The Rockies have done that in this game. We've got to start getting some lift on these balls that are all being hit to the ground. Second walk allowed here, both to lock there. On some nice discipline in this game. And there's not much else going positively for the offense. If Chicago needed two outs, that could have been another double play. Robert, two homers. This time, McMahon decides not to even pitch to him. That'll bring up Jimenez. That pitch left over the middle, and it squeaks through the diving glove of Sterling Thompson. Thompson does have a very good glove at third. That's part of the reason I wanted him up in the majors. That would have been a tough play to make. Javis unable to field it cleanly, but we still get the double play. A great throw for Murillo and some nice hustle here from McMahon to go and cover first. Should have been a much easier double play. Chavis almost cost us that second out, but we pick it up. So both teams having some bad luck with these double plays here today and a clean Six for McMahon. Bottom six now for the offense. Bliss lifts it into the outfield, finally getting underneath the ball, but it is caught. Jimenez over in left field. Thompson had a double his last time out, but a pretty ugly swing there. Only three strikeouts for Soroka. A lot of these, his success is just coming on forcing these. We contact balls. That one was struck fairly well by Solace. But it won't get down for a hit. At this point in the game, I'm not really all that concerned with what we're doing pitching-wise. I want to see if we can put a run on the board. I do not want to be shut out by Mike Soroka today. Murillo starts off with a strikeout. Chavis with a fly ball that will be hauled in by Robert. Forced him to do a nice little run there, but... Not going to be enough to get down for a hit. Jordan Beck. And he squeak out another infield single, and he can. Second time he's done that here. Bean. Trying to get this through the gap between third and short, but instead, the seventh will end. Will Colorado be shut out today? I know we said we weren't going to see any more of our pitching, but I had to show you one more pitch as Robert would hit home run number three. I mean, 
If you're doing a Rockies franchise, I'll give you a little hint. Keep Nolan Jones and trade for Luis Robert. These guys do nothing but hit nukes here in this series. My goodness. Into the eighth, the White Sox would relieve Soroka. His energy was all shot. So, won't be a complete game shutout from just Soroka, but could be a combined shutout as Locklear goes down looking. Sarney 0 for 2 today. Pitch high in the zone. He hit it well. It's deep in center field and gone. Sarney breaks up the shutout. We will get on the board today. Just his fifth of the season. 424 feet to center field. And that's just, you know, uh, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Not getting shut out by the White Sox today. A solo blast puts Colorado on the board. Ryan Bliss up next. One down. Nobody on, and he will lift it to right field for a fly out. Top of the order back up. Sterling Thompson has one double today, and he's looking for another. As this one will drop into the outfield, find his way back to the wall. Sterling Thompson very easily into second base. A multi-hit debut for the young third baseman. Solace, though, unable to keep the inning going as he grounds to first. And the pitcher covers the bag to end the inning. Bottom of the ninth now, Rafael Murillo. No hits today, but he looks to change that here. As he gets that one through the infield for the single. So no hitless performance from our star. Chavis up next. Full count pitch. He'll get it through the infield again. A couple of rounders through the infield to start the inning. We'll bring up Jordan Beck. 3-1 pitch is outside. So the bases are loaded with no one out. And up comes Zach Veen. But before that, we've got Joe Barlow. Entering the game for the White Sox. This would be the perfect time for Veen to get his first career major league hit. And oh! Zach Veen! A grand slam here, bottom of the ninth. For his first major league hit. And what a massive one it was. 450 feet to center. The White Sox fans can't believe it, and just like that, it is a one-run ball game. Veen could not get anything going the first eight, eight innings, but he picked the perfect time to get involved in this game. The second Grand Slam here we've seen in this Rocky series, and a good first impression for Veen. In the dugout. Teammates giving him the silent treatment before giving him a big round of congratulations. With a massive hit for the young outfielder. Tyler Locklear, he's drawn a, a couple walks today. Looked to be drawn another one there because he was not ready to swing at that slider. I was easily inside the zone. An ugly swing from Cerny, though, will give us just one more out to play with. Ryan Bliss. Up to the plate. Hasn't been able to get involved today and should have been out to short there. But Montgomery could not field it cleanly, so the error will extend this game. Sox manager is not in love with that. Sterling Thompson, though, one of only two guys to have multiple hits in this game, could not find a third, though. So it will be a White Sox win. That last inning made it a little bit more interesting than it was for the first eight and a half innings in this one, but some good moments from both Thompson and Veen in their debuts despite the Colorado loss. Both gave us some good first impressions, which you like to see. That's what really we're looking for in this season. You know, one of the, we're one of the worst teams in baseball. 
all we really want is for our young guys to get some solid development and show us the promise of what they might be one day. Robert and Soroka, two awesome players that drove the White Sox to victory today. Before we end off the season, we've got one more critical situation that I want to do. We ha- it's been a while since we've seen the Dodgers play. Here's a look at our rankings. Uh, home runs, we've, we're down to 13th. Everything else, we're bottom 10 in the league. Trey Sweeney up. He's going to bunt the runner into scoring position. So one down and a man on second for Curtis here. Colorado holding a one-run lead. Cartaya will get it through the infield. So the Dodgers get the tying run from the nine spot in their rotation. As the catcher comes through in the clutch for the Dodgers. Top of the order. Freddie Freeman up to the plate. A pitch high in the zone is lifted. And Jordan Beck underneath it for out number two. Gavin Lux hitting at the two spot here will get underneath another Curtis pitch. And Murillo this time the one to glove it. So just one swing of the bat away from walking off a victory here. Not going to be from Murillo though. Till ground out to Mookie Betts. We're out number one. Can Ethan Solace do something here? Not looking like he was ready to swing at that fastball. Way behind it for the second out. Gordon Beck up to the plate. Had two hits last game out, and this one squeaks through the infield past the diving glove of Gavin Lux. That will extend the bottom of the ninth. Ryan Bliss up, hitting in that sixth spot. Pitch inside, jammed him up, and he is out. So we're headed to extras here at Coors Field against the Dodgers. Top of the 10th, Curtis remains in the game. Mookie Betts up to bat, and we get what we wanted there. A grounder to third does not advance the runner, which is a key thing to note there. Shohei Otani, this one will advance the runner to third, but we've got two outs. All we need is an out here or James outs men. But instead, we've got a grounder through the middle that's going to give the Dodgers the lead. Applying some pressure to the Rockies. Or the bottom of the 10th was a good opportunity for us to keep the Dodgers scoreless here in the 10th. But instead, we'll have a one run. Deficit to erase as Taylor Clark would come in to relieve Curtis. Locklear up. Gets one through the infield once more. Outman throwing home. And not going to make it in time. Ryan Bliss ties this game. So we've got a man on first. No outs. Can we get one extra run across the board here? And steal it and steal away a victory from our rival Dodgers. Benny Montgomery would come in to pinch run here, getting that speed over to second. As Anderson will bunt him into scoring position. We'll bring up Colby Thomas. Lifted to center field. It is back and run down by James Outman. We'll advance the runner to third, but with two outs, we need a hit here. Logan Cerny hitting li- uh, leadoff in this CPU-generated lineup. Not sure that's the man that I would put in the leadoff spot, but... Looks like we're heading to an 11th inning regardless after the flyout. Clark gets the out, but that grounder will put... The runner in sacrifice fly territory, but a beautiful out by Clark getting Sweeney looking there 
for the second out. That was a big time strikeout from Taylor Clark. Now all we need to do is retire Diego Cartaya, and he gets another ball through the infield. Just like in the ninth, the Dodgers get a clutch hit from the catcher. He's the only reason the Dodgers are in this game at all. Freeman lines it over to right field to end off the innings. But once more, the Rockies have one run to keep this game alive. Two to win. Chavis. Not the start you're looking there. Looking for there, as I should say. As the runner will be forced to hold a second. Bringing up Murillo. And Phillips just did not want to pitch to him. Probably a wise decision. He's come up in the clutch situations for us several times over. But Ethan Salas now has a chance to come through for us. He goes down swinging on the curveball low. Once again, just kind of didn't look like he was ready to swing. Like it was his last time up to the play. Jordan Beck, our last hope here. Two down, two on, down by one, bottom of the 11th, and swinging through the 88 mile an hour fastball. The Dodgers will steal away a victory in extras here at Coors Field. The Dodgers had multiple chances, just couldn't get it done. The Rockies would have finished off the season 59 and 103, could not quite avoid losing 100 games this season. If you take a look here at the standings, did we finish off the year as the worst team in baseball? We were six teams, six wins, excuse me, worse than anybody else in the National League. And the Athletics actually ended up being worse than us, so not the worst record in baseball. I'll take it. That's improvement. We were by far the worst last year, getting to 29th. Obviously not a lot of improvement, but some improvement is, is what we're really looking for here. 59 and 103. Now, what I'm planning to do last year, I had September and the offseason in the same episode. This year, I'm planning on doing it differently. I want to go through all of the stats and awards and everything with you next episode. But what I wanted to end this episode on was I wanted to go through some potential trade targets once more because we could make be making trade number two in this franchise as soon as the offseason. And I just want to get your thoughts on it. So taking a look here at the top of the, the prospect board, I really want to go by position and starting pitcher. I think getting another pitcher that's not far away from making an MLB debut is going to be the priority for trade number two last. You know, our first trade was for a catcher. I think with the drafts we've had, we've gotten some really good hitters. I want more MLB level pitching. So let's just go through. Option number one, Chris Rodriguez. He's a righty, 18 years old, 71 overall. Um, doesn't throw very hard, but that's okay. His walks per nine are excellent. Hits per nine and pitcher clutch, both being in 40s, makes him a little bit longer of a pro project. Not going to be somebody that probably makes his debut next year, but perhaps the year after that. 77 stamina, so he is somebody that can be a starter, I think, long term. Dwayne Perry is somebody that I have mentioned a couple times as a top target of mine. Him going all the way up to 77 overall might make it harder for him, us to trade for him. It might have been, you know, the sweet spot was this year to trade for him. Uh, we could certainly try. I think he's going to be our best option. Has excellent stamina. His per nines are really good across the board. It's really just his control. I think if we can trade for this guy, then I would like to. It's just a matter of, is it going to be possible? He might have played well enough this year. And of course, we can't see his stats at this point in the year because the, the season's over. But just these ratings right here, 
or good enough that he might have played himself out of out of contention we might not have the assets it's not in here only 59 overall don't really think that's an option what about noble meyer he is not on the 40 man so he is eligible for us throws decently hard variety 73 stamina on the lower end of what you want but i still think good enough to be a starter and really well rounded per nine he's gonna be 22 years old this could be you know a chance for us to bring in another real player um in a draft only franchise of course a large portion of the players you have on the team will be generated uh, prospects from the game but it's nice to have the occasional real player and noble meyer could give us that james ungrier here let's take a look at him he is 18 years old 71 overall his hits per nine are only 47 but his player clutch is 77 so i think the fact that that player clutch is so high helps mitigate the fact that his hits per nine are low throws a 95 mile an hour fastball that's pretty good stamina in the low 80s is also pretty good not somebody i had had on my radar previously but it looks like he just had a really good year vaulted him into the 70s i think puts him on the radar for us andrew painter another opportunity to get a real player he is on the 40-man roster so um and he has mlb experience so he is actually no longer eligible but it would have been cool to add you know a real player that's already 80 overall but he is unavailable of course dolander is on our team you have byron rowe uh, that player clutch and hits per nine just too low henry tanana i remember him coming out of the draft really low home runs per nine is what made me hesitant at the time and i think it's what's gonna keep me hesitant now for him that walks per nine already at 90 though is pretty dang sweet next up you have donnie bell good old donnie bell and once again low hits per nine here um just going quickly i think ronald castillo is honestly a pretty good option for us 19 years old 73 overall b potential you have to imagine that's high b and everything at least in the 50s this could be a guy that maybe we don't have to trade as much to acquire four seamer cutter slider curveball change up so here's a guy a little bit down the board that i actually like a decent bit you now you have the guys at the top like Dwayne perry who'd be really good noble meyer james unger gonna be harder to acquire though but if we want to maybe not have to give up so much ronald castillo could be an option um decent player here in reggie chance really high stamina you love to see it and i think angel macias he's a lefty so that i think makes him pretty intriguing is uh Strikeouts per nine is low, his home runs per nine is low, and his control. But I think he's at least intriguing. And then here's our guy. We have a lefty here for the Padres. Everything at least 50 plus, so I think that's intriguing. Nolan Watson, you know, we can make another trade within the division. And there you have it. So let me know what you guys think. Who among these pitchers should we try to go for? We try to find a package that could work for Perry. We go a little bit down the board, or do we find a value pick like Castillo, Macias, or Snelling? But that's all I've got for this episode. Like I said, we'll be going through stats and awards as well as the off season in the next episode. Can't wait for it. And I will see you then. Go Rockies.